Look, I know what I said. I said that I would never make a video ever again on the beaver gambits. Well, guess what? I lied, okay? I'm going to do it again because I just got a message from one of my viewers that said, Hey, thanks to your content, I defeated this I am in the French Elite League last month. It's a declined beaver gambit. And I have to show you this. This is a big tournament. This is a big deal. Somebody in a standard rated game played the beaver gambit. So you know what? Get lied to. I'm going to make the video, I'm talking about the Beaver Gambit one more time, because this is just too cool. And this is a game in a very serious elite French tournament uh, between two players. I'm not even going to try to say the names. I don't want to embarrass myself. But this game kicked off with E4, C5, Knight to F3, E6. And this is one of like the French sort of variations of the Sicilian defense. White played C3, potentially, with some potential to just play D4 on the next move. But now after knight to F6, attacking the E-pawn, white pushes knight to D5, B4. This is it, the beaver gambit. And here it is in a real serious tournament, and it's up to the opponent to decide how they want to continue. And in this game, we saw that the beaver gambit was declined with the move pawn to b6. Now, of course, if the opponents do decide to accept your gambit, the main point is that you play c4, and wherever the knight moves away, your next move is d4, and you're able to get a huge center, and in this way, white hopes to get some sort of initiative in the middle of the board. But in this game, after b4, the opponent played pawn to b6, and white actually came up with a really interesting plan, because if you're facing this for the first time, this could be something very different difficult, but white played an absolutely model game here, and what's really cool is that at some point it really felt like every move, white had the initiative, white was making threats, and black had to constantly respond until eventually the position just collapsed, and here's what white came up, of, uh, came up with, it was truly impressive, it went b takes c5, otherwise, you know, you're gonna have to deal with black taking on b4, uh, they took back bishop to d3, and I thought this was a very interesting idea, the bishop is just going to go straight to the e4 square, where it's going to have some pressure on this long diagonal. And I thought, okay, this is actually kind of an interesting idea. Let's see how this plays out. And the opponent played bishop to b7, so white plays bishop to e4. And this is an excellent square for the bishop. He's really doing a great job eyeing down this diagonal. White's ready to castle. White might have ideas of playing pawn to d4. White may have ideas for this knight, as we'll kind of go and see as this game carries on. But it went something like this. Queen to c seven, putting a little bit of pressure on the e5 pawn. White decided to get castled, and now black plays d6, attacking the center pawn. And obviously, it just looks like if you do nothing, black is just going to simply take on e5. So I guess maybe your first thought would be to play something like pawn to d4. That looks like a very safe, stabilizing move that I think a lot of players would probably choose in this position. But white actually came up with something very impressive, a really nice move in this position. And it's all about developing. It's all about creating the initiative. It's about getting things out as quickly as possible. And white came up with with the move, knight to a3, temporarily sacrificing this pawn on e5. And black did take in the game, which allows white to demonstrate the idea, which is to play knight to b5, kicking the queen away, and then white will go about regaining the pawn on e5. Now, if black does want to do something to deal with this, you can imagine a6 would be the move that the opponent would choose, but then the knight would simply go to c4, where you have full protection of the e5 square, and I think white would be pretty happy here. The one thing that you don't want to do is to take right away and allow black to develop one of their pieces. So I really like this move, knight to a3. Black did decide to take, white plays knight to b5. This will force the queen to go away, and then white will be able to regain the e5 pawn. So the queen went to c8, and knight takes e5 is what was played. And you can already see white has gotten developed, white has gotten castled, and black is just about to get ready. But there is a little bit of a problem for black, and that is if you just play bishop to e7, which I think would be the most logical way for you to begin to prepare to castle, you have to worry that uh, white actually will get an initiative with a very strong move. So this was not played in the game, but if it had, white may have come up 
with queen to h5 with the idea that you're attacking the f7 pawn and you can already see this is a bit of a problem like black can't just develop simply and just get castled because if you do get castled reminder that we do have a bishop here so this would just be a checkmate immediately so black would have to do something weird like play pawn to g6 where either the queen is going to sneak in and prevent you from castling or maybe we're going to go here to f3 and i want to point this out because now there's ideas of playing pawn to c4 for exploiting stuff going on on this long diagonal so all of a sudden there's a little bit of an issue for black if you're not able to just simply play bishop to e7 and castle like white has already stopped this what in the world are you going to do and the opponent came up with this move knight to c6 and this seems like a very reasonable move as well because okay i'm just going to challenge the knight the knight is one of the big problems the knight is attacking the f7 square and in company with queen to h5 this could be a bit of an issue okay so knight to c6 let's get that on the board let's trade the knights let's get going uh well now we saw Bishop takes d5. Again, another very forcing move. And white is obviously very okay with the e-file opening up. And in the game, the opponent did decide to take this knight, which was kind of the main point of knight to c6. I'm going to take your knight. If, on the other hand, you were to take this bishop, we very well might see something coming to the e-file. But again, we also could see something like queen to h5 coming yet again. And this kind of situation could be very problematic for black, because if you are just to trade this knight, for example, we're taking here, and black really does need to take a lot of care. There's no time to play here. Not only is this def undefended, but maybe a little bit more importantly, there's also this move you got to start to consider. And all of a sudden, it's like everywhere you look, things are not very easy you're obviously not going to be able to go here because there's just going to be this fork like no matter what you do it's like it's suddenly not at all easy for white to figure it out or for black to figure it out so black decides let's keep the e-file shut obviously and let's just take this knight okay white plays another forcing move bishop takes bishop queen takes back and okay we take stock yet again and we're trying to find very forcing moves and that's what white is going to do every turn you develop and you play something that makes a threat and here white comes up with the move uh rook to b1 eyeballing the queen so that we are threatening to move the knight away with check and to just win the queen so now black has to respond again has to move the queen away black plays queen to d7 and now comes another forceful move how are we going to get even more stuff into the game well white plays pawn to d4 and white is ready to open up the center as much as possible uh and okay black doesn't want anything to open up so black just moves the piece away knight to c6 but now comes another forcing move white plays boom pawn to d5 another excellent idea we are just trying to rip open the position as much as possible and the first thing you'll notice is if you take here obviously the e file will open up and i think this is actually what happened in the game but you cannot take with the queen because it looks like okay maybe we're going to go here we're going to trade queens no not at all we're going to be playing knight to c7 and we're going to be winning your queen after all so black needs to be very careful black decides to take and now we have the e-file open and i think here a lot of players would be tempted to play for a tactical move something like queen to d5 like this looks like a very good move with the idea that you're trading and you're winning your your uh, queen back but at the end of the day this is actually only equal material maybe white has some slight initiative in this end game but maybe you can do even better and again white finds an absolutely incredible forcing move in this position uh back here after this recapture instead of doing this instead of going for something like this which maybe allows black to play bishop e7 and get castled white finds another forcing move bishop to f4 threatening to put the knight on c7 so black again has to respond to this threat black plays rook to c8 and now rook to e1 and after uh 
king to d8, notice that in this position, because the bishop is here now, there's no way of playing bishop to e7. And white has found an absolutely delightful way of preventing black from castling and just going through with the plan of getting castled, getting safe. Because in this position, there would again be knight to d6. And this pin really means a lot. Uh, and this would just be winning for white. So black has to move the king. Okay, this is a tremendous success for white. We know things that are, are going very, very well. White here comes up with queen to f3, and the idea is this now has become the target. I'm going to be playing my rook over to d1, and I'm going to try to take your pawn. So black decides it's time to kick this knight away. Let's play a6. Let's get that knight to go back. Maybe if you go back to a3, maybe I can get a little bit of time to get the rest of my stuff out. But white says, you know what? I don't care about that. Rook to d1. Let's do it. Let's go full force. Let's take on e5. And... Black says, no, thank you. Let's keep it closed. Place pawn to d4. White now takes on d4. And obviously, we're just getting ready to take here. And if you are to just take back or something like this, uh, a lot of things could possibly go wrong. Like you could just be taking back, obviously. You could also be playing something like bishop to g5. But even just something like this, you can start to see exactly how things have gone wrong for black. Now, uh, in the game, what actually happened was, in this position, black decided to take the knight. Uh, okay, fair enough. White takes on c5. And now comes knight to d4. And maybe this is black's last chance. If black is just able to get you to either move your queen and then maybe is able to play something like bishop takes c5, maybe black will just barely be able to keep the d file closed long enough. So white again needs to come up with a nice forcing solution of how to win this game. And uh, our hero here played rook takes d4. The idea is now your queen and king are lined up on the d file, so rook to d1, and white skewers the queen to the king, and after this recapture, we get this position. And what's kind of interesting about this is that material here is technically equal. It's a queen and a pawn for two rooks. But the black king is just so exposed that white should be able to win this, although it still will take a little bit of care. The king goes uh, over. The queen gives a check, and now we see white issue a series of checks until white is finally able to win this pawn, but with a check. Uh, at some point, the bishop comes into d6, uh, and eventually white is able to remove this pawn with a check. So everything is forceful. Everything, even in this endgame, is very forceful. We see another check. King moves over. Queen b7, attacking the rook, another forcing move. This forces the rook to move over. Now another check, forcing black into the pin. For a moment here, they repeat like a couple times. And now it's time for white to come up with a plan. And white here decides, okay, I can't make any more progress giving this check. I'm not going to be able to make much progress giving another check. It's time to just make Luft. And I basically, white is waiting for black to do something. Uh, and until then, I'm just going to make Luft and, okay, I'm going to find some other plan. Black eventually does take here and plays h5. And black is hopeful to play something like, let's play rook h6. Maybe I can swing on over, uh, remove this pawn, and then things, okay, maybe they'll be okay. So white again has to find some forcing moves. First giving this check, then bringing the queen back to this diagonal, where now it's threatening to come into c8, which would win this, but also would win this. Now comes rook to d8, but now after the queen goes to c7 attacking the rook, it's no longer easy at all for black to save both of the pieces. So the rook goes far away, the pawn goes to d7, and the game ends right there in resignation. The pawn is just going to be queening no matter what the king does. So if you go up, we're queening, but we're also doing it with check via this discovery. So there's just never going to be any time and there's no way for a black to stop all of it. So this was a fantastic win and thank you so much for sending in this game. Whenever gambits are played in super huge tournaments, even if I said I'd never play it, uh, never make a video about it ever again, you know what? I'm going to do it because you know what? I lied. That's it. All right. Bye.